Amen. Thank you, Martin. We thank the Lord for such a time. And I want to tell you consecration is a choice. And when you choose to live a life of consecration, be ready to walk alone. Because the Lord will begin to put restraining orders on your life. It starts to limit your life. I might talk to somebody. The Lord begins to limit your life. And the first thing he will do he will remove people in your life who defile you. You know, they are false prophets. But they are also false sons. That God wants to remove in your life. <laughs> false sons. Who call they also mommy, mommy, mommy. Who call you daddy, daddy? daddy, daddy, daddy. My spiritual mother. Mama ngo my spiritual ngo father. Tata ngo but they are false. In their hearts they are not sons. Mm? Yes. The spirit of Absalom is in them. I'm being prophetic one of the things that will defile your consecration life are false sons who have attached themselves into your spiritual bloodline who call you daddy but they have come for evil exchanges who call you mommy but they carry lying spirits. Mm? And let me say this. Before this camp, there are those that have been calling me daddy father. Who will be cut off. Because they are traders. So merchants. They want to exchange inheritances in the house of God. And they think they can be false and stay around and lie until they get the inheritance and run away. They are false brethren that must be cut off from your life. False teachers, false prophets, false apostles. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. They have to be cut off from your life. Mm. And false spouses. <laughs> it's hard. Four spouses. Four sons. Who serve you because they are just waiting for the moment they have it and take it for evil. Real sons will take their place in your life. And I always say. When we're dealing with bloodlines, not only biological bloodlines, but even the prophetic bloodlines. Because for God to deliver you, He connects you to a bloodline that will deal with the evil bloodlines of your blood, of your evil issues in your bloodline. Amen. And you may be too close to a man of God, but far from his spirit. You may be too close, very close to your pastor, but far from his spirit. Hmm? 
You may walk even with him. But far from his spirit. Because every time you come closer, the Holy Spirit warns him. That's false. That's a false son. That's a fall. That's a strange son. That's a strange woman. That's a strange. That person carries a strange altar. Mm, such a. That person carries a strange altar. There are people that have been raising strange altars in your ministry. And are close to you. And you open up to them. And they have blocked growth. They have blocked increase. Because they are carrying strange altars in their hearts. And they are trying to defile the foundation. And they are carrying strength profane fires on the altar. Profane fires on the altar. Profane fires on the altar. The sons of Nadab carrying strange fires. The sons of Abihu carrying strange fires on the altar. And you've been wondering why you've failed to create a bond with some people who seem to be so spiritual but your spirit has refused to connect and it's a, it's a strange altar it's a strange fire in them that need to be dealt with as you deal with foundations. Am I told somebody? The issue of strange fires. Some of these strange fires. Some of these strange altars are in people who we call ministers. Some of them are part of our leaderships. Some of them are elders. Some of them are members of our boards. But in their bloodlines, they have carried strange fires for generations. Now they've come to the order of prayer. The strange oath and the strange fire in them keeps defiling your life and keeps defiling the altar and then they incite foundations against your life and you see every time you are trying to progress strange fires come and disarm you May, let them be quenched tonight. Let them be quenched tonight. I said let them be quenched tonight. You need to take authority. And say I remove false sons. False apostles. False brothers. False sisters. And strange altars. And these, sometimes they are so attached to you and seem useful, seem supporting, as if the ministry cannot survive without them. But they only stay around you to keep you small, to keep you little, until they exchange your star. You don't know what I'm talking about. This is not an ordinary message. It's not for everyone. Strange fires. When you leave the church, they come back to the altar and raise strange fires. They use your name and they tell everyone, I'm close to him. I know him. But in the instance, they are breaking a cycle of relationships because of the strange fire in them. The spirit of Absalom who stand on the gate 
and seek favors at the expense of the call of God on your life. There has been an Absalom in this ministry that God has to cut off in the name of Jesus. There has been an Absalom in your ministry, in your family, who you think is right but it's an Absalom spirit. Sometimes when you walk a consecration life, you seem rude and unfriendly uncultured because when evil is there, your spirit, your spirit is stirred up. Regardless of who that person is, you are ready to wear the sword. Why? You know the price you've paid to come this far. You know what you've left. You know what you've put in. You know what you've put in the ministry. You can't let someone cut off what God is doing because they call themselves brother, sister, son. Some people who talk to you they are talking from a strange altar. They have a, the snake, the tongue of a snake. Their tongue to you think they are telling you. But the tongue they speak is so deceptive. But a strange altar, a strange fire is speaking to you and defiling you. When it defiles you, the man of your destiny the man of your destiny suddenly stops communing with you. Stop speaking your calls. Stop praying. Because the spirit has picked you. You have been defiled by a strange altar and a strange fire. You have allowed yourself a strange altar to minister to you through a false brother, through a false sister, through a false son. I cut off Nsalako. that tongue e, that defiles you. I, men in this house, we've been praying for as men. I asaja. cut off tongues Nsalake that have defiled you, Nsikuononye. telling you Nsikamba. that someone cares Nsikamba. more than your wife. Nsikamba. And say, oh, you know, man of God. And that tongue of Jezebel, that tongue of a snake, that is turning you away from the woman who intercedes for you. I wish I'm talking to somebody. How can you tell me that you turn away from your wife and you go to another woman and, but you care so much about me if you do not care for the woman in your bed how can you care about me are you getting me I said, get ready to walk alone. Strange friends, strange sons, strange apostles have to live your life. Yes. And they always come when you are rediscovering yourself. When you are discovering the pace of your prayer, the case of your prophetic bloodline, they begin to sweet talk you, defiling your spirit with talks of devil strange altars have been raised through phone calls through gifts in your life cut them off now cut them off now if you've ever been to a strange altar that kept flattering you that kept calling you great but you're not yet great cut it off strange altars of water spirits where they are giving you waters. Some people are coming to you with business ideas but to remove you from the altar. You didn't hear what I'm talking about. Let me tell you. One day the, my, my Altars in my foundation that I had not dealt with came and it came through brothers brothers they came to me I prayed for them they got, their business got delivered 
Oh, they said, man of God. You need to leave ministry. Come and be the director. Come be the prophet of our businesses. You know what happened? I backslid. I have ever backslid. I left the ministry. Now, I was busy the priest of businesses busy I was getting a lot of money and they could pick me at home from 5 a.m. Bring me back at midnight. We go places. We go good places. I have the money. My wife said to me honey I'm sorry to tell you. You've backslidden. I said, look at this woman. The speed of poverty in your bloodline is disturbing you. God has opened doors. These are brothers. They have businesses. Now they bring money. Thousands of dollars to me. Every day. She says, the man I married was the man of the altar. One day she talked to me crying. She says, you are a man of the altar. But these days, you return at midnight tired you just got sleep you live at 5 a.m. when do you pray I say sunny I prayed enough I have the anointing to keep going and she said as long as God is alive I'll never touch that man I'll never touch touch even one dollar. I said the curse of your bloodline is disturbing you. But the brothers are, are, are flattering me. Oh man of God. Oh man of God. Oh, man of God. I have a special driver who picks me at 5 a.m. Oh I put on good suits. I went to the church. I go to the church. I want to, to, to say goodbye to you. Because now, Kubakati. I'm above this level. Oh, edala, I told her, one, one young man, you be the pastor. I'm above that. My wife said, honey, you have backslidden. You've left the Lord. I said, I've not sinned. I've not committed adultery. I've not stolen. God has blessed me. And she said, that blessing is from the devil. It's not of God. It's from a strange altar. Those brothers are not of God. They carry strange fires. Their businesses are false. They, have, they are fraudsters. You may not know them. They say praise the Lord. They are elders in church. They are honored in their churches. Because in their churches, there is no fire. That's why they can be elders. Now they have come to quench you. Quench the altar with strange money. So I could come, come home every night. So tired. My wife waiting for me. And no night I found her asleep. Every night she could be praying alone. Very lonely. And when I'm sleeping. Now I'm deep in sleep. She's laying hands on me. By bad chance sometimes I could wake up. <laughs> And she's praying. I said, why don't you stop shouting at me? I kick her away. Why don't you stop shouting at me? Stop your demons here. She sits down. When I go back to sleep, she holds my feet. Sometimes I'm, by the, I wake up in the night. She's still sitting there. I say, woman, that misery of yours, I think it's from your father. She keeps quiet. She never answered a word. She could just wake up. After, the, after praying to prepare my clothes brush my shoes you know my wife cleans my shoes she does not let people clean my shoes even she, 
cleans my shoes. She does not let anyone iron my clothes. Even touch my coats. She prepares them every night. She irons my clothes. Make sure they are clean. My shoes are clean before she goes to bed for the next day. So she's praying for me and I'm insulting her because they have incited me with the strength fires against my intercessor. She goes into fasts. I could look at her, she's losing weight. I looked at her hair. And I said, you're not even worthy to be my wife. See how you look. Look at how you are thin. And she's fasting for me. I'm sharing this to some women right now. Because you, you want to run away from that marriage. Not knowing the strange fire that we are raised against that man. You think he has left the call, but strange brothers came around him to spy on his freedom and take him away from his jurisdiction. And they wanted to curse him. And so one day, towards after some time, she decided to take a fast. 21 days of water only. Hey. She looked like the skeleton walking. I said now, this woman, she's not eating. Every night she's crying to God. Sometimes I could pretend sleeping. And I hear the prayer. Father, bring him back. Father, don't give him up. Lord God Almighty. And I'm listening. But all, in all that, the man is coming. Man is coming. The blessing is coming. But I'm now away from the, from the altar of God. Not praying. But I was doing ministry. Not waiting upon the Lord. Not reading the Bible. But things are working out. They are not working. Things are working out. But I'm not praying. I'm not reading the Bible. I wake up at 5 a.m. Dress well. Go for assignments. Things are working. And the brothers are happy. They are making more money. Oh, they say, my God. We have this contract. We have this tender. We have this one. We have bought this land. We have this one. Not on the altar now. Me, I'm not on the altar. My wife is on the altar. And towards the end of her fast, I was tired and sleeping. I had a dream. <laughs> In the dream, I was in a bus, in a, in a van. It was a golden van. Made of gold, everything gold. And I'm sitting in the van. And I'm in, we are on the highway. A, I'm in the van. I could not see the one driving. I, don't, I knew there was a being driving. But besides me, on my left, was Gaddafi. Gaddafi. On the right Kudio. was Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. <laughs> and I'm looking at these guys and I'm saying, why am I with these guys? But I cannot stop that van. It's so fast. And I'm telling myself, I'm not supposed to be within this place. But I could not get out. Because it's fast on a runway and I don't know where we're going. And we are for hours and hours. Suddenly the highway came to an end. The van disappeared. Gaddafi disappeared. Michael Jackson disappeared. Now I'm standing there. The high was ended. And there is a mountain. And the mountain was all burnt. 
It's like a fire. And a force in the mountain began pulling me in and drawing me in the mountain. Then I see what's going on inside the mountain. And there was a cage. Then I could see myself a cage. Cage, cage, cage. not cave. Cage. So I'm in the cage. Cutting animal cage. And I'm seeing these beings Ndabibitondebino. with daggers and spears. Ndabirina. Piercing in, uh, trying in, in the cage. And a voice says, "That is supposed to happen for forever." Because according to them, they are they know and they are sure. You are, you have entered hell. But because your wife is praying, I came out of the dream. I came out of the dream. Said, because your wife is praying to them in the kingdom of darkness, I was already going to hell. The mountain was sucking me. And to them I had arrived. And to them they had put me in the cage. But the voice said, because your wife is praying, it said, be because your wife is praying, it stopped on that statement. I woke up. I was sweating. I, she was sitting there. I said, honey, I've just been in hell. Thank you for bringing me back. She said, what's going on? I picked my phone. I called the brothers. I said, I have resigned now. I'll never come back to your work. That's when I knew who they are. They became my enemies. They vowed to destroy me. They wrote letters about me. They gave four things about me. That's when I knew where they had come from. From. They had come from hell to act as false brothers. That night, I came back to my wife. Said, Honey, I'm sorry for what has happened. But thank you. Because it's only you who was praying for me. If it was not you, I was gone. If it was not you, I was in hell. You've just rescued my soul from the pit of hell because of your intercession. Please give the Lord a praise. Please give the Lord praise and thank God for my wife. Thank God for Pastor Juliet. Thank God for her faithfulness. Thank God that she remained on the altar until my soul was, I was gone. But the Lord used her intercession. There are wives I'm talking to right now. There are wives I'm talking to right now. Am I talking to a wife right now who is a value of divorce because you think your man is too far but listen to me there is power when a woman intercedes there's power when a woman intercedes foundations will listen my foundations were taking me now using false brothers the same is happening right now in people's lives but thank God for the woman who has not left the altar Thank God. Oh, I wish I, and I don't know why I'm sharing this to some people right now about strange brothers, strange sons around you. They will be used to take away you from the altar. Hmm? But thank God there's an intercessor. And this message is for one woman here. And I don't know which woman. You're looking at your husband, a pastor, and you're saying, he's not of God now. He's not praying. He's doing nothing. He's, uh, but he's still doing ministry. And some of you, you, them have gone to the occult. Some of your husbands have gone to Satan to seek power, to seek wealth. And you know it as a wife. Don't give up. Don't stop in a city. I said, don't stop in a city. Don't stop. Listen. 
Cut off strange tongues that have been speaking to your husband. There are people that speak to him secretly. You are not aware of them. They, are, they seem to be prophetic and spiritual. But they are false. They keep speaking in his life. They keep speaking in his soul. And that's what they've been doing for years. And they are now disconnecting you from him. They are standing you between you and your husband. Between you and your wife. Strange brothers. Strange prophets. False brothers. False sons. No oh, spiritual father. You know there are those that say papa papa. 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 You know man of my our papa. You know our papa. Now you man you are not even eating at home. Because a spiritual daughter buys your shoes. Never allow your children to buy clothes for you. It's not acceptable. Spiritual children should not dress you. They feed you. You have a wife. Why should they feed you? Oh, Papa. Papa. Oh, Papa. Papa. Some juice. Oh papa. Si papa, some cakes. Cake. Oh papa. papa, a good show. Engate oh papa, papa. bed sheets. En... Oh papa, a blanket. You are buying your papa a bed. You are a strange daughter. Papa, o muguli ne zita anda oli mu mutbunle mu. God has spoken to me. Muga ma yoke dena to replace my father's uh, bedroom. Oh. <laughs> You are entering your father's bedroom. You are buying bed sheets. You are buying beds. You are buying shoes. You are buying pants for your father. You are buying shoes. You are buying pants for your father. You are strange daughter. You are false daughter. He has a wife. You are preparing breakfast for him. And lunch and dinner. In the house. You are taking him out. Not with his wife. Who sent you? Who sent you? Who are you working for? Young men here. Especially you new in the ministry. They begin calling you Papa Prophesy. Papa Those those Papa Prophesy have destroyed many ministers. You are not the first they are calling Papa. You are not the first spiritual father. Spiritual father. The day you tell them, God has showed me a wife. The day they will curse you. Then you know they were not daughters. You know they were not daughters. They were not sisters. They were strange. They were mermaids. They came from hell around you when they saw the call on your life. They are not delivered. And some of them are not deliverable. Yeah. 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 They come with dreams. Papa God showed me. Papa, Daddy, Mukama Yandazi. Papa showed me. Papa, I was with you. And I was holding your suitcase. But I had a towel. And I brought it. You when you Because I know them. I cut them easily. And they think they can win my heart with tears of manipulation. You know you're not in touch. Papa, Papa. I, I have seen the spirit. Some spirit will cast them away. Other spirit will run away from them. Some will chase them. Others will run away. You know, if Elijah did not run, Jezebel was going to sleep with him. That night, Jezebel, the man was not a coward. 
He had killed 500 prophets. But he knew Jezebel was not going to cut the head, was going to sleep with him. And the man said, Give me my coat. I go. <laughs> Are you stronger than Elijah? Jezebel, you run. When Jezebel has cut you off, pick your phone and call your wife. Honey, where are you? Come and rescue me here. They, are, they have surrounded me. Come and rescue me. Don't say I'm strong. I can resist. Jezebel. Hey, Jezebel. Don't resist. Run. Call for help. Call for help. Pick your phone and say, honey. Answer this call. It always comes at 2 a.m. Answer that call. Oh, papa. Papa. I was calling. I've just had a dream. You have been here. <laughs> you have just been here. <laughs> Cut that off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cut off strange sons. Women. Cut off strange sons. You call you think it's a son. You wake up. One day. You are in his bed. A boy as young as your son. You say, how have I found myself? Your son, son, mama, 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 mama. Mama, mama, mama. Mama, mama. Spiritual mama. Before you realize, you are undressing. <laughs> I am telling you from experience. I know how they disarmed the women of God. Those, those mama, 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 mama. Oh my God. You know, what remove those wonderful women of God from the altar? A ring. Ring. He just came with a ring. Oh, ah, ah. Mama, Mama, will you marry me, Mama? You marry your Mama? Oh, sort your Mama. In the peak of their ministry. In the peak of their ministry. In the peak of the anointing. A strange brother came. Even married her. And cut her off. In the peak. When they are touching the nation. They came to the pastor. Oh God. God, God has told me Sister Farida is my wife but I also buy the church land. Yeah. I've told you about a brother, a false brother, who came in a church and sat there over a year, very rich and very humble, very cultured. He could come to the pastor and say, Pastor, I'm just born again. I love God, but I don't understand the things. But I feel like I should buy you a new land cruiser. Buying for the pastor. And he comes the second time. I say, Pastor, you know I travel a lot. When I go to Dubai, Dubai, I want to bring the uniform for the worship team. Worship team and new equipment. Maybe you may be peer. <laughs> oh, Pastor. Musumba. I feel like Mpuriranga. we need another building. For me, I just, and the brother is, seems so humble. 
then he comes to the pastor pastor you know I, I want to get married but see that sister in the worship team what do you think pastor did not pray did not ask God he went to the sister the sister don't be foolish the Lord works that rich brother and told the pastor I don't want anything because I'm new in Christianity let her just teach me the Bible teach me the Bible and this is like, you're not to disciple him and for two years the brother the sister comes to the pastor and says this man is from heaven for two years he has not even said a word we just start the bible even he does not allow me to his car he lets another car take me the, man, the brother is too holy so as he's teaching her, she's teaching him the Bible. He says, she says, he says her, do you have brothers? Yes, I have. Bring them. Need to employ them. Want to give them jobs. Makes one a manager. Another one a manager. Another one a manager of the brothers. They had been without job for five years. Now they are good, they have jobs. And they are paid. By, because the sister is discipling the brother. And he says, Agamba. How about your parents? Do they have a home? I can buy them a piece of land and build them a house. I'm just a brother. Oh my God, this brother is from heaven. The sister is a great worshiper. When she worship, heaven comes down. She could see in the spirit that there's something wrong with this person. But in the spirit, every time she tries to go deeper, she sees is in the dream her pastor blocking her so she could not get the details of who this person is and the brother that God had shown her was still living by faith one shirt yellow shirt purple trouser so the brother and the brother there, the real brother, is still living by faith. The false brother has built a house for Mama. He's now paying school fees for the little ones. He has employed the brothers. He's funding the church. But still not saying anything unholy. Mutukuvu talina cha yogera chitali chitukuvu. And now there are two years. Katibali muebiri. On her birthday. Ku birthday. He buys her. Amugulira. Oh, a great land cruiser. Land cruiser nene. So it's a birthday gift. Nagamba chira wacha birthday. Then one day suddenly he proposes. He says, will you marry me? When he said, will you marry me? She looked at him and his face was deformed. He saw another, she saw another bee in him. She went to the pastor and said, Pastor, he said that he wants to marry me. But this is what I saw. The pastor says, the demons of your clan are now resisting you. She said, but pastor, my spirit. She went to the mother. Mama, 
Mama. This is what I saw. Chino chena labi. The mama said. Mama na mukamba. My daughter. Muwala. Are you stupid? Look at the house. Look at the brothers. They are driving cars. They are working. They have jobs. If you refuse that man, what will happen to us? If you refuse him over my dead body, don't come to this house again. She goes to the real brother. Say brother. You know, I know what God said to me. And I know what you saw. Now look at yourself. Now I, I have nothing to do. Just pray for me. And I go. I'll support your ministry. <laughs> and under pressure. She accepted. To marry the man. Very glorious wedding. Very powerful. Everyone in church was saying. God has remembered her. God has remembered her ministry. She told me pastor. Everyone on the wedding was happy. But I knew in my heart. Something is not adding up. He kept, he, the wedding was done. Went in the marriage. Nothing happens, nothing strange. Until she conceived and gave birth. The day she from hospital home, she found strange men at home. Very high in this nation. They are waiting for her with the husband. They said, Give us the child. She had never known that there is a, a, a secret room in the basement. They said, now that you have a child with us, come. They went in the basement. basement. Opened the room. And there is this huge serpent. Who they worship. And they told her. Offer your baby to Hadith. Offer now yourself. And looked at him and said. You didn't tell me. He says, yes. I had been sent for you. We don't need you. We have your blood. Say blood battles. Say blood battles. And I said, we don't need you. We just needed a blood with the frequency of worshiping you to come in our realm. All we needed is a child from you. Because all we don't need you. We needed the blood. Someone said blood battles. And they got a child. She gave them the child. Because all these men were around. She says they were so excited and taken. They were holding the baby. Like something so precious. And they forgot about her. That's how she sneaked out. She was dressed in just night dress. Without shoes. She ran from Nagulu. On foot. To Lugala. On foot in the night. Those days I could be at church in the city. I could know God, God's going to bring someone. Around 2, 3 a.m. She was at church. And I said, what, why are you here? And she told me, I have just escaped. But I don't know what's happened to my son. I gave birth a few days ago. But I have given my son to them. And I don't know my son. And I told her, it's not just a son. It's your firstborn. The one that has opened your womb. That's what they wanted. Your pastor could not protect you. Your mother could not protect you. They couldn't, they did not warn you. And they have your blood. They have your blood. Because they know now the grace to worship they, they, that God had put on you, they have accessed it through your firstborn. Some of the blood battles. You know that man didn't want you, he wanted the blood from you. 
He wanted something from you. They came like strange false brothers. Because we are under false pastors. Who just are there for the money. For, for platforms. And they have sold our souls. They have sold the worshiper. They have sold the altar. Because someone is paying. Today in our churches. The highest bidder can take a church. Someone just needs to come with a million dollars. For one year. And takes over the church. Our men of God are for sale. Even when they know this is wrong, as long as someone is paying. But those that are paying, they are willing and able to give whatever you ask for. As long as they have your blood. Now that they are now waiting, they are fighting. They are strategizing for your daughter because they need her blood. She carries your blood, your firstborn. Hey, what's happening with this church today? What's going on today? So quiet. It was not love. They wanted the gift. They wanted the blood. You could worship and heaven opens. And you were, and you were a threat to their kingdom. Every house had your song. Every crusade needed you. Every conference needed you. Because you opened the realm. And they sent a false brother into your life. Married you. Just gave you a ring. And took your destiny. I'm talking to somebody. I'm crying for a great worshiper in this nation. I'm crying for her every day. I'm crying for the worshippers. I'm crying for those women, those girls who had a heart after God who could stand and open the ram and their pastors sold them to the rich guys of this nation and stopped the revival. When they married that girl and took her blood, they stopped a revival in this nation. They stopped a move of God because her worship was for all open the heavens. And church, they have judged instead of interceding. They have thrown them away. Instead of saying, we know it's not them we slept. We slept on the job. We did not watch them. We just enjoyed their worship. We kept bringing them to our conferences. We didn't tell them, stop. Go back to the altar. Stop the invitations. Stop the now. Don't go in the concerts. We didn't say, Let, get out. I'm going to hide you. Just say, oh, oh, we need the masses. We need people to come. You can bring them in. And we turn our worshippers into entertainers. We traded them. We traded our daughters in church because of their gifts. We trade our sons because of their gifts. We, want, we use their gifts to get people in our churches. We did not protect them. We did not watch them. We did not say, I'll protect you. And when they were taken, we don't even pick their calls. We need to repent. Fathers need to repent in this land who sold daughters on altars of celebrity because they could bring masses to them. Even when we knew they are burning out. Even when we saw they are beginning to off. We said we don't care as long as they bring the people. As long as they read the next song. 
I know who I'm talking to right now. That's somebody in this room. That's what happened to you. But there's redemption tonight. I said there's redemption tonight. I don't know what happened to you. There's a man I'm talking to. Exactly that was happening. That's what happened. You are, you are rising in the anointing. In prophesying. In seeing in the spirit. In seeing things. And they came around you. They began trading you. From altar to altar. They began taking you. It was happening to me one time. They began trading me. From altar to altar. And when I realized. They are trading me. And I cut them off. They turned against me. And they said. We, because he is not submissive. When we want him, he does not come. I told my wife, these men are trading me. They just want me. They gifted me. You know, people who can tell you to preach every day, they called me from my honeymoon to go and preach. And when they knew I'm in my honeymoon, and I said I'm coming, they said come. We have 14 days here. 14 days. I just married a woman. My wife. A few days. And they were not even ashamed. Though I had my issues. But they were not ashamed to say. This man has just married. What? Two weeks after marriage. They brought a prayer meeting in our house. 24 hours of prayer. Every day. We are just married. She said. We just married. There, 24 hours and they said James and Juliet your watch is midnight to 3am when will I be with my wife and, they, and my wife has to cook for them every day and night like 15 men in our house sleeping there but we are raising the altar for their business for their churches their pastors She's cooking for them. They are eating like rats. They ask for bread in our house. They ask for food. 2 a.m. She's, she's preparing tea for them. And we are just married months. And they're in a house. They want a gift. They were trading me. I was naive at that time. And one sister came and said, Juliet, what are these men doing here? When are you with your husband? We didn't have an honeymoon. We didn't have even the first year. We are always on the altar. <laughs> 3 a.m. From midnight to 3 a.m. We are on the altar. 4 a.m. She's preparing tea for them. <laughs> These men could eat. They are so traders. That's the whole first year of our marriage. One of them even left his house. And took over the guest room to be his house now. Brought carpets and furnished it and said, I'm staying here permanently. In, in the house of a newly married boy. Those are so strange. You're going to accuse me, say, he has not opened the Bible. He's not opening Bibles now. He's telling you about your issues. Cutting off the strange brothers, strange sons, soul hunters, soul traders who come around us to buy souls, to exchange destinies. They are on our altars. They just know who is trending these days. And they come to trade. Who is viral these days. And they come to trade. And they are coming. 
Badger. They're coming. I've seen them. Mbalabi. And I tell my team, I don't care this, their status. I don't care their wealth. I will not see them. Now I know they have traded men. They don't want you to do what God wants, has called you to do. They keep trading in their conferences. Their seminars. Seminar. Oh, come for another conference. Oh, come people will come. Oh, people will come. Oh, people will come. When they hear you are coming, they will sign in. They will pay. Because they are strange. They are, they are false. They are in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. My pastor, you say. <laughs> you know, these 25 years I've been in the Lord. I've seen church. And I don't want to play church again. And that's why, the, that's the reason I can't allow to be called a pastor. I can't. I can't. I don't want. There's nothing I can say about these men called pastors. But they're still real, real good pastors. But many are false. Because every time you say Pastor James, I see you've put me in the caliber of those people. <laughs> Let me remain intercessor. You know, these days, when you go to places and say, I'm a pastor, they don't even want to say something to you. They can't say, oh, you will pay tomorrow. They say, ah, pastors don't pay. Pastors don't pay. You go to a bank and say, I'm a pastor. They will not give you a loan. No one will give you a loan. Ah, no way, no way, no way. Pastors, you go and say, okay, I'm paying half a bring man. Pastor, people don't want to work for pastors. Say, pa pastor, in their company, pastors don't pay salaries. And they are so anointed, but they don't pay their workers. Now you are they not false? And then they are busy. Knowing who is a false prophet. But they are also false pastors. And how many souls they have traded for their names? How many lives after working so much for these men were discarded? And they, were, they are now in pain in life. How many men that gave all their lives for these ministries but then they were sold? Today, I say today, in the next few minutes, those attachments are going to break from your life. Those false sons that have been defiling you must leave now. I said today, you're going to see what's going to happen. You didn't know it was in your life. You can keep it. Or you can say, Lord, take it away. That's not your identity. That's not your bloodline. That's not your prophetic bloodline. Though you, you still want to identify with it. But your marriage was traded. Your children were traded. Your life was traded by an authority. A false authority that illegally controlled your life. That sister told you, you don't know what she has gone through. Even her deliverance. Even, even, she has, even the restoration has not happened because they have her son. They have her blood. They have her blood. 
and God removed her from the city and took her far away in Masaka there to hide there and go through her, her, her consecration. And she's not yet restored complete. But, okay, she is not restored. But as a church, as a church, what did we lose? We lost a watchman. We lost a worshiper who will open heaven. And I'm telling you friends, sons and daughters, people of this ministry, don't get excited to start trading. This revival, this move of God, this consecration is not for trading. Don't look at the money. Don't look at what people are giving you. Don't look at what you, are, you can sell finish your consecration I, and I've been asking God what are all these things that have happened to these girls and these boys and these men why Lord and he said to me they went out too early they went out before time when they saw people saw the gift no one told them no hide complete your consecration complete your consecration when they released the album no one told them sit don't go nations don't go in nations you know how many people are coming to me and say, I can take you to nations. And I tell them, I don't need to go to nations. Nations come to me. I don't need to go to them. Am I talking to you? You don't need to go nations. Nations will come where you are. Nations will come to where God has put you. You don't need to go to them. You don't need to be a pastoralist, spiritual pastoralist, nomad, <laughs> looking for pasture here and there. <laughs> Traveling a lot does not mean you're a great man of God. No. You may not travel, but people will travel to you. Oh God. I want to be because most of those altars are not going to bless you. They are draining you. They call you to minister on altars. And the man is a fornicator. And only what he does is paying visiting pastors to come on his altar to validate it and keep draining them. Many of you, many people I know how the spirit came on them is from an altar they stood on to minister. They went to preach there and from that time they lost it. Their altars God does not even want you to step on. But they have a very big love offering. Very big love offering. Love offering they send $10,000 before you travel. Or $20,000 before you travel. All they need to come and stand on their altar. And fornication will come on you. And your marriage will break. He has lost his marriage. He is not now marrying a third time and is inviting on the altar because he has a big love offering. Some platforms are unredeemable. Don't stand on them. It is safe for you to raise your own platform. It may be small. It may not be significant. But it will save your soul. Don't go for those big altars. You call all oh, mega church, mega things. Listen. The fire is not there. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I might talk to you. They are coming. But watch. The Lord said to me, they went out to Ali. 
They did not finish their consecration. Can I talk to somebody right now? Don't go now. Finish your consecration. Those who went ahead of you, see what happened to them. See what happened to their ministries. Do you want the same story? Finish your consecration. Hide until you appear. Hide. Hide. Read your Bible. Be a nobody. Stay with your little flock. You only few members. They raise them. Raise a platform. Build relationship. They will protect you when the traders come. They will not sell you. Can you put off those lights, please? They will not sell you. They will protect you. Because they are real sons. They are real sons. They are real, sons. They are real brothers. They are real. They are honest. They are not thieves. Stand on your feet one moment. Have I been too hard on you? Because I love you. I've been through all this. That's why I say, I don't want to see anyone go through this. Through what I've said. Finish, complete your consecration. Cut off that which defiles you. Let them go. If they are yours, they will return. Now, the power of God, the glory that restores, is going to come upon your life. Jesus. The power of God. Sharabakoshia. The glory that restores you to your position, you to your place, you to your place. There are many that were displaced because the foundations were still demanding and claiming them. And as I speak right now, as I speak right now, as I speak right now. To speak right now the glory of God one more time Father one more time Lord this one more time lift your hand and say Lord this one more time you can say like Samson say this one more time this one time Lord oh Lord I want to see you I say, Lord, this one more time. This one more time. Grant me my sight. Grant me my sight one more time. Hey. Ay, 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 ay. Shut up, This one more time. This one more time. Someone lift your hand. Sarah Ashes got ready. Others got ready. This one more time. Let the fire fall on me again. This one more time. Bring me back to the altar. This one more time. Let me hear someone praying right now. This one more time. 
Woman of God, something's happened to you right now. This one more time. This one more time. This one more time. This one more time. You are lifted from the pit. The hand of God. The hand of God lifts you up from a pit where they put you, where they traded you, where they blessed you. I see you now. This one more time. As a family, you and your husband lifted from a pit. Zagade. Zagade. Your father in the Lord invited someone on the altar and he trapped your husband. But right now, right now, right now, the hand of God lift you from a pit. A pit of poverty. A pit of shame. A pit of shame. This one more time. This one more time. There are five people in this house. This one more time. This one more time. Yeah. Yeah, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Yeshua Mashiach, this one more time, the Lord appears to you, this one more time, the Lord lifts you, ah, ah, hey, yadao shadeha, riele baba bada dosh, liyaradi yadaba bada deyandeha, where you are standing now this one more time the glory return to you this one more time the fire return to you this one more time somebody pray hey see 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 this one more time even when they took your blood even when they took your blood this one more time somebody pray even if they buried you in a grave this one more time that dry bones that dry bones that dry bones come to life now dry bones dry bones dry bones dry bones dry bones dry bones come to life now dry bones I just get ready one by one in the valley of dry bones 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 Rike Radeo Shata their intercessors worshiper intercessor worshiper intercessor worshiper you could intercede and worship her. and many souls came to Christ you could intercede and worship her. and many were healed you could intercede and worship her. and the Lord appears but they trapped you now Now. Come up and out. Come up and out. Lady, Sise, come up and out. Sise, come up and out. Sise, come up and out. Rikara de Kazadia. Ziara Baba. Riele Baba Rata. Mariko Debra. Mary, come up and out. Shata de Kata. Yata. Worshipper, intercessor, worshipper, the one who could draw veil, the one who could draw veil, Sikari Telita, Mara Taroshia, Rate, Josephine, come up out, come up out, Fiona, come up, come up, Fiona, come up, come up, come out, Mataria, Fiona, come up, Judith, come up, come up, come up, come up. Come up out of the pit. Come up out of the pit. Harriet, come up out of the pit. Shut up in Can you pray? Can you pray? 
I see a man, you are a prophet, you are back to the altar, you are back to the altar, they dreaded you, you are running a race, that they tried to make you mad, they tried to make you insane, they slandered you, they hurt you, they wounded you, but I call you back, Rika Tatata. The wind of the Spirit of God blows around your life. Pray. Pray. Every defilement in your body, I flush it out. The seed they deposited in you, the defiled blood they put in you, I remove it now. I remove it now. Somebody pray. Back to the altar. Say back to the altar. Tell your husband. Back to the altar. Tell your radea. See you later. Zaladea. Saladiga. Shierea. Makota broshata. Zikete di kerea. Rataratarata. Rikaratorata. Siea. Open your mouth. Prophesy one more time. Open your mouth. Sing one more time. Open your mouth. Preach one more time. Open your mouth. Travel one more time. Shatadia. Let your voice arise from the deep. Arise once again. Ila mande la katidia. Da 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 da. Riba ba 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 ba. Lande le mosi katara ba didia. Reseke tela ba katara ba didia. Riba ba 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 ba. Lande da 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 da. Reseke tela ba katara ba didia. Riba ba 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 ba. Raza katara ba kosi katara ba didia. Razia, razia ba katara ba kasa razia. Reseke tela ba kosi katara ba didia. Riba ba 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 ba. Lande ande. Ya da da da. Let your voice arise. 
Thank you, Jesus. Everybody is. Oh. oh God. Cut off. Salako. Falsehood. Ovulimba. Lord God. Those who were treaded. Because they were innocent. This one more time. You know they loved you. You know they wanted you. But a false authority sold them. Now this one more time. Let the glory come now. Yes. Let I see Ndaba. the angel lifting you from pits. Your ministry from a pit. Your business from a pit. Business They came Badja. and you lost the money. No fear was sent. As a family, you lost it all. Someone treaded you. An authority treaded you. Because they looked at you and your husband. And they admired what you had. And they treaded you. They incited evil foundations. But I stand in authority. In the authority of a father. And now say be lifted from the pit be lifted from the pit your business, business yo. your wealth Obugagabu. your money you were doing well until they traded you they were, you were doing well until they traded you. Until they traded your gift. But now as I speak, the Lord has sent an angel to locate the pit and lift you up. There's a woman I'm seeing here. A great woman in this nation. And no one knows what happened to you. They're asking what happened to her. What happened to her? She had a great call. She had a great eye. She could see the spirit. Now. The mighty one of Israel. The mighty one of Israel locates you. There's a woman in Niger from Nigeria. The mighty one of God Almighty locates you where they exiled you. For they removed you from your place. They blinded you physically and spiritually. But right now in the name of Jesus, the mighty hand of God locates you where you are. Help those people, help those people. Because I see many of you right now. I see right now, right now. The veil is removed. The veil is removed. The evil shadow is removed. That thing you feel following you has been arrested right now. 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 That man cannot use your ministry. Cannot use the anointing on you. Cannot use your ashes. Get ready, help the people. 
Lift your hands, lift your hands, everybody. That man cannot use you for his wealth. He cannot use you for his wealth. He no longer uses you. He will no longer use you for him to prosper and you, you scatter. Somebody, there's a lady behind there. The power of God is delivering you from a soul tie of that man who has used your name and your prayer life. Jesus. Yes. Somebody, oh my God, see. Lava. See what's happening now. Lava. See. Lava. See. Lava. The glory returns to your marriage. You and your husband. You're supposed to be great in the land as a couple. But they remove the glory from you. But as I speak in the name of Jesus, oh my God, oh my God, a great light is shining on you now. A great light is shining upon you now. Jesus. Yes. Samothy, this one more time. Say this one more time. This one more time. This one more time. The glory returns. This one more time. The glory returns. I don't know. What your blood sister did to you. But I cut off that power. I cut off her witchcraft. I cut off her altar. I cut off her manipulation. I cut her off from your life. One in the name of Jesus. There you are. Jesus. I shall help people. Jesus, I shall show people behind there, behind there. See, a blood sister, blood brother, what he did to you to block your blessing, to block marriages, to block conception, and they call you barren. But today, in the name of Jesus, I cut off the power now. Shut up. I cut off the power. I cut off the power. You are not barren. You are not ashamed. You are not barren. You are not barren. It's your blood relative. It's your own blood that did this to you. Your own blood blocked your conception. Your own blood who said you got married. You will not have children. It's your own blood that said these things. Now. I cut them off your life. Sala Kura Mobu. It was done by your own blood. Your own father. Your own father. Though he was in church. Your own father blocks your progress. But today, in the name of Jesus, we cut off that. Whatever has blocked you, that was done. By your own blood, blood sister, blood brother, today I cut them off. I cut them off. You are not barren. You are not poor. You are not a witch. You are not rejection. Today. Pray. Pray. Whatever was done by your own blood, we cut off today. Whatever was done by your sisters, that are greedy to block your conception, to block your life. Today, in the name of Jesus, I cut them off. They wanted your husband, they came for him. But today, we cut them off. We I don't hear you. Whatever was done by your own blood, your own blood, your own blood, your father, your blood sister, your blood sister, to death by fire, cut them off, cut them off, cut them off, cut them off, cut them off. 
I deliver you from the curses, from the powers of your blood sister, your blood brother, your own blood that did this today. The fire of God, the sword of the Lord, cut off your life, cut him from your life. Hey, you did know that your own blood bound you, the one of your own blood. The one of your own blood resisted you. But today, but today, the power of God in the name of Jesus. Cut it off now. Cut it off now. Cut it off now. Cut it off now. You are not barren. Today, in the name of Jesus. You are not barren. Today, in the name of Jesus. I say, you are not ashamed. You are not barren. You are not barren. It's your own blood. That blocked you. It's your own blood that said you never cut a baby. You never cut a baby. They said the cry of a baby will never be in your marriage. But today I stop that now. One by one. 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 In the name of Jesus. Mazaka da 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 Rubozi katara ba dididi Rimanda la da 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 Raza katara ma kosi ala ba dididi Raza katara la da 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 I destroy it. I destroy it. That thing they married you to. That being they married you to. That thing that they said to become your husband, to become your wife. I destroy it. Rise out of you. Rise out of you. Leave you now. Leave your ministry. Leave your ministry. Leave your ministry. Leave your calling. Leave your ministry. Leave your life. Leave your life. By fire, 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 by
Don't let her go out. They want to take her to kill her. Because it was done by her own blood. Today I release her. Today I release her. Today I release, Today I release you. From the bondages. Of your own blood. I release your soul. Don't let her go out. Father God, whatever was done by our own blood to bind us, destroy it. What was done? My blood sister. Blood brother. To block my life. To block my marriage. Today. Today. Cut her off my life. Cut him off my life. Cut it off my life. Even if it was done by my own father that has blocked my destiny. Cut him off. Yes! Yeah. Yes! Yeah. If it was done by an authority I submitted to in a church cut him off now yeah yeah zia tato shideka uya dea zia ratalabo Let's pray one more prayer. Whatever was done by my own blood to block my progress, receive the judgment of God. May God judge you now. May God judge you now. Whoever did something to block my conception, to block my progress, the Lord judge you now. The sword of the Lord judge you. 
the sword of the Lord judges. I take back my children. I take back my wealth. The marriage of my children. The marriage of my household. The blessing God had given me. The call God had given me. Today. 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 Today, 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 let the fire of God consume you. Let there be judgment today. Resika la makadidia. Ramana la kadidia. Resekete la makasi la makadidia. Deje de de de. Raza katara makotero makosi la makadidia. Riba kada da 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 da. Raba ba 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you stand on your feet, everybody? If you can, if you can't stay where you are. And lift those hands. Say I'm free. From blood entanglement. Entanglement is on
Jesus. Say it one more time. I'm free from blood entanglement I am free from blood entanglement I am free from blood entanglement of my father's religion of the idols of my father the idols of my sister I am free from blood entanglement I am free. They were from blood entanglement. Oh, blood entanglement is almost. I am not their own. I am not their own. I am not part of them. I am not part of them. I am not part of them. I am not there. I am free from the entanglements. They are okatakatania. My marriage is not part of their marriages. Zagadikedia. Riketetetea. Shatatakatatea. Rikerikatata. I wish you know what's going on. I am free from blood entanglements, the sicknesses of blood entanglements, the barrenness of blood entanglements, the addictions of blood entanglements. Today, I Today, 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 I am free from the entanglements of their idols, from the entanglements of their gods, from the entanglements of their sacrifices from the entanglements of their altars blood entanglements let me be go let me free and my son and my daughter and my spouse and my ministry and my soul I don't hear you. I don't hear you. My brother, my sister. My daughter. You are free. From blood entanglement. The sickness of that blood cannot work on you. The reproach of that blood cannot work in your children. <laughs> the reproach of that blood, the delay in that blood, the shame in that blood, the poverty in that blood cannot work on you now. Cannot work in your life. Today, it's over. It's over. The entanglement. Say that one prayer. My children, you are free from blood entanglement. The entanglement of my father cannot be yours. My children, I separate you from the entanglement of my father and the entanglement of my mother. My sons, I free you from blood entanglement. Go far and excel. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord God a shout. Give the Lord God a shout. I am free from blood and tongue of it. I am free from generation and tongue of it. I am free from the sin that entangles generations.
the sin in the blood that entangles women that entangles men I'm free from it now the entanglement of polygamy the entanglement of adultery I am free from it I'm free from its consequences I'm free from its pain I'm free from its control somebody say hallelujah thank God it's your freedom sit down I Our time is fast spent for today. Before we have communion, I'm going to say two things. Oh my God. Oh, I wish everyone was here. The heaven is open. Your womb is free from blood entanglement. In that area, I see wombs. Yeah. 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 The entanglement you suffer was in a womb. You were supposed to die in the womb. When the umbilical cord coiled around your neck, they were entangling something. That's why you always late in things. Someone has always tried to get ahead of you. Your own sister. Always she has wanted to be ahead of you. From childhood. This must end tonight. Your own blood. The sister of your mother. Her own blood has blocked her children. Today I unblock your soul. It's not for everyone. I know someone I'm talking to right now. Someone you were praying with in the church tried always to get ahead of you. Today in the name of Jesus take back your place. With this age future. They created stories to your pastor and you were removed from a position and you were hurt because those had false dreams about you they gave false prophecies and you lost your place as an administrator as, a, uh, as an assistant. Nga assistant. You hear? Only one. Are you the one lifting your hands? It has been long. I see it's, it's like seven years. They removed you. Ba and they trapped the man of God. 
Because you are the God, you are the gate, you are the wall. He wants to bring you back, but he's so ashamed. Right now, be healed. I see you, my young son. I see you. I see you. I see you healed. Lift your hand and if you are the one I'm talking to. They create prophecies, dreams, visions. And they turn you against your man of God. Who you dearly loved. Who you dearly loved. Today. I deliver from their witchcraft. They were devil worshippers. They were satanists. I deliver you from their powers. There are another person like her. You are in this meeting. I see her sister. See you brown. You are light skinned. And this is what they did to you. Your man of God trusted you, loved you. You were the intercessor because you were honest, because you loved him sincerely. And they removed you today in the name of Jesus. I deliver you from the satanists, from the witches. Come from the pit where they buried you. Come from the Pit where they buried you. Be healed. Your soul be healed. Actually, they fasted. They fasted to remove you from your position. They fasted a long fast until they removed you. Today, I break their power from your life. There are four people here. There's another one in this meeting. I remove the, their thorns. Like a thorn in your heart. And because of that, you got a disease. That has troubled you all your life from the time that happened. Because they sent witchcraft arrows. Deep in your heart. I pull. Yes, this is the sister who we are talking about. Come here, my sister. Come here. Blood of Jesus. Just lift your hands to Jesus. Just lift your hands. I know it's not been an easy journey. I know you could do anything for your man of God. The money, the time. And today, they crippled you. They wanted you to die with a stroke. And they kept attacking your heart. But today in the name of Jesus, I stand against their arrows. I take on your battle now. I take on your battle now. <laughs> I take on your battle now. I take on your battle now. Oh, that ministry would have been far by now. See what has happened to that ministry because they removed you. you. Today be healed. Your marriage be restored. Your life be restored. Your heart be healed. Your name be restored. Your name, I see they say, they say these words. They slandered you. They said words which are not true. Even the, someone here, they said that if you are sleeping with a man of God and you are not. Today, I remove that spell from you. I release you back into your ministry. I give you back your ashes.
They raised an altar against you. But I destroy it now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Someone clap for Jesus. Be healed Clap for Jesus. Ashes. I don't want you tying people's legs. We are delivering them, you are tying them. And the people in the cameras, I remind not to film anyone. We are not showing anything. Someone said, Lord, one more time, the glory comes. Say one more time, one more time, the glory comes. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Sit down. I know many of you are hungry now. I think everyone should be in in this place. Why don't you in the next two days seek leave those that are working and you're watching online and bring your family here. All families in the next two days. Why don't you bring them here? Why don't you call a friend and say, come, come, come to the consecration center. Because God is doing mighty things. Not only for you, but even for me. When I pray the prayer of blood entanglement, I heard them crying. I heard voices crying from my bloodline. Even me, I was getting my deliverance. It's not only you. Don't forget to pray tonight. That I'm free from blood entanglements. In Jesus' name. We're going to have a Holy Communion. Two things. We're supposed to have our midnight altar. But uh, my team came and said to me, Daddy, they so now we have the midnight and the 5 a.m. But one of them said something very important. He said, Daddy, you need to be before the Lord more. I love when I serve with people who can advise me. And as a leader, sometimes you, you have a desire, but your people can talk to you and say it's not possible. So we will not have the midnight altar. My people say to me, we have a lot to do, but also they say to me, Daddy, Daddy. You need to be before the Lord. More. One of them said, The people that are here, they are going to be doubled in the next two days. They're going to be in thousands. So he said, You need to be before the Lord. And I said, Okay, I will obey the Lord. So I will not be for the midnight altar. But it doesn't stop you from being on the midnight altar. We have a 5 a.m. altar. And all of you must be here. We have all a communion at 7 a.m. And we have the 12 the deliverance watch on Friday from 6 to 6. In Jesus' name. That sister will be healed soon. She will live that crutch here. I'm telling you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have all the communion. But let's first get our offering. And it must be a very good offering. That's the only offering we are giving today. To break entanglements. entanglements. Blood entanglements. Amen. Amen. Get your offering, please.
ushers, please. Can you be faster? People are hungry, want to go to and eat. We have one basket here. Another basket up there. Another basket there. One up, where's the basket up there? Make sure you fill them. I'm not going to tell you how much. I'm just going to tell you obey the Lord. Today it's entanglement breaking. Especially blood entanglements. In the name of Jesus. We are believing God for mighty things. Amen. Amen. My faith is that this week we'll be able to raise enough money to have our second bus to enable our, our transport in the name of Jesus. But what you're giving, I believe the Lord will honor your giving and your prayer sealed in with your offering in the name of Jesus. We break the entanglements. Holy Father, I release a breakthrough to your people. Cut off every false person that has been draining their blessing. Whatever drains your blessing, I cut it off now. You haven't heard what I prayed. I don't want to go in deliverance again whatever has been draining your finances whatever drains relationships whatever drains your anointing I cut it off your life you will not see it in your life again you will not see it in your marriage again whatever drains your, your anointing whatever drains your finances I cut it off from your life Father you always answer my prayer. Answer me on this. Cut off what drains the blessing. Cut off what drains this, these lives. Whatever drains them. Cut it off now. Spiritual parasites. Fall off now. Spiritual parasites. Parasite I feel there are people here. You get you get the wealth, you get the money but something drains it. And then you don't have anything to show for you what you get. You, you get a billion and it goes. And I hear the word billion because the Lord is saying you are to command billions but something has been draining you in your blood in your maternal bloodline in your maternal bloodline something drains your blessing in your maternal bloodline when you look at your uncles you know what I'm talking about it's the same thing that drains you but today in the name of Jesus by the authority I cut it off your finances in 90 days, you'll get back your billion. In 90 days, you'll be back in the realm of wealth where you ever stepped. And this time, you'll remain there. This, uh, uh, I've just seen a being from this corner, this place, the people here. A being just took off like a shadow, a black being. Someone in this place here. I just saw it running away. Oh, I just saw it leaving your hands. I just saw it leaving your leave. Oh, my God, lift your hands. People here. I just saw it leaving now. That which has been draining you. Trying to make you like your uncles. And make you be a beggar. And make you wasted. I cut it off your life. I just get ready. I see that being run out from your life. It cannot rocket you now. It's a 
in it's an ancient covenant because your mothers were sold as slaves into that those families and that being calls you a captive but today in the name of Jesus it's cut off your life it's cut off your life it's cut off your ministry it's cut off your talents you are in the arts your ministry is in the arts. You are to present things and everyone follows them. It's done. Oh my God. Somebody walk and give your offering and we do quickly. Put in the basket. I shall stand on those baskets. Who is standing there? Who is standing up there? Keep praying everybody. As we give, let's come quickly for to give up to let's we'll have three stations as usual. Pastor Juliet. You're here, okay? Pastor Juliet will be here on this table, on this serving place. And Pastor Henry will be with her. Um Sumay Najakwanim Sumba Juliet. Uh Pastor Martin and Pastor Henry will be here. I will be here in the name of Jesus. So let's stand. We're going to go into court right now. As we give our friend, let's be faster, please. Sorry for the delay. But it's a consecration day. Consecration means deliverance. Someone say, I'm free from blood entanglements. Say, my household is free. My household is free from the entanglements of my father's blood. My household is free from the entanglements of my mother's blood. In the name of Jesus, Son of the living God, give praise in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Let's go. We're going to read as fast as possible. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask the court of heaven to be in session right now. I ask the court to be open. I ask the judge of all to be present. The blood of Jesus, the Lord Jesus himself, the 24 elders, and I ask today, even the accuser to be present but silent. And now today, I ask the books to be open for our families, for our children. Almighty God, I present the blood of Jesus. I present these elements to be holy to you. Use them today as transactions for the healing of our families and deliver us from entanglements. I declare these elements holy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. The night was betrayed. He took the bread. And broke it. And said this is my bread. My In the same manner he took the cup. Father let this cup. Be a witness. In our lives. From today. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.